Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing and first look at the Sony RX10 Mark IV. Priced at a hair under $1,700, US you're about to take a look at the most expensive bridge camera ever made, and in my opinion, arguably the most impressive. For those of you wondering why you'd invest $1,700, that is again US currency, in a bridge style camera rather than an interchangeable lens system where you could get a larger sensor, I'm about to give you some reasons as to why. First and foremost, let's start with what we get in the box, even though you're about to see that. See it right here in the upper left corner. You have an AC adapter, uh, a rechargeable battery pack, which is the W series, micro USB cable, shoulder strap, lens hood, and lens cap. Then if I flip to the other side of the box, we get all the specifications. And this is where things get interesting. You can see we have a one inch sensor it is 20.1 megapixels, much like the RX, uh, 100 Mark V, which this does lend quite a bit of tech from and always has. The RX100 and RX10 have mirrored each other in terms of sensors, but not in terms of, of course, form factor or the lenses that they pair with. And that's the big thing here. Again, like the Mark III, in the Mark IV, we have a 24 to 600 millimeter piece of Carl Zeiss glass, f2.4 to f4, no constant aperture like the original RX10 back when it first launched, but this is nothing new. If you were a fan of the Mark III, telephoto is where it's at. The significant thing, as you can see right there, 315 phase detection autofocus points. So we now have the hybrid autofocus system traditionally found in interchangeable lens cameras in a bridge style camera. So for many of you, while this may seem expensive, uh, this could be your dream camera if the imaging uh, class is up to snuff, and that's of course what I will be testing. 24 frames per second on burst mode, so you actually can take 24 images in a second. Uh, you do have touch focus, uh, you still have HFR, high frequency recording, so up to 960 frames per second in video, and then as you see on the far right, 370 images or 400 images, depending on the quality, I'm assuming, in terms of battery life. That's what Sony's telling you. Wi-Fi, NFC, 4K video capture, of course. This is basically the run and gun dream uh, when it comes to an all-in-one camera. And that is really the premise behind the entire uh, RX10 lineup, uh, is that it's been the bridge to replace them all. A little trouble with this here, but there we go. Let's see what we have in here. Uh, no surprise, first thing we're going to see, paperwork. And there you have it. Some paperwork, let me get that out of the way. And the next thing we're going to probably see is the camera and then some accessories. I'm going to go ahead, pull the camera out right now. And I have reviewed every generation of this camera and every generation has quite frankly been impressive. Now I did predict back when the RX100 Mark V came out, even though I was reviewing that while also dealing with uh, hurricane fallout from Matthew, I did mention that it was likely that we were going to see those updates uh, to the autofocus system, all those things trickle down into the next RX10, which would make it a phenomenal digital imaging machine. And that's exactly what I'm expecting from this product. So now that I've gotten, I believe, everything out of the box, let me go ahead and get rid of the box and show you what we've got. We've got a W-Type series battery, as I mentioned earlier. This is the same battery Sony's been using now for quite some time. Uh, affordable, not the best battery life, not what they integrated into uh, the A9, uh, uh, excuse me, into the uh, A9, the latest uh, camera that I reviewed uh, in the mirrorless interchangeable lens world uh, with its incredible uh, autofocus system. RX10 uh, strap right here, and then you have, of course, your USB connector for the wall in order to charge, and the USB cable that actually goes into the wall wart in order to facilitate on-body charging. But of course, you do not have to charge this on-body. You could always uh, defer to uh, using a standalone charger, whether you buy Sony's or any other manufacturers. Now, the camera itself, what you've all been waiting for, here it is. So we've got a lens hood bubble wrap to the front, put that down, and here it is. It looks just like the RX10 Mark III. Um, at first glance, I'm not seeing any tremendous differences. Uh, you can see, as I go in tight on this, move these things out of the background, uh, that 
Robust build quality on this camera, and it should be for its price, but that's been a constant with all of the RX-10s that have ever come out of Sony. Um, control of your focus, um, infinity or not, holding focus. Uh, you have right here two ports that, and by the way, the camera is weather sealed. That does not mean it's weatherproof. I'll always reiterate that. But we've got a microphone and headphone jack as well as HDMI out and also Sony's multi-port, aka micro USB with more than just charging capability. Uh, as we move to the back of the camera, OLED EVF, touch screen here now. Uh, I expect these to both be very good. Your video uh, capture button right there, as well as your menu button right here, the sensor to detect whether or not you're using the EVF. Uh, all sorts, well, not all sorts, but programmable dials that you can use. There's, uh, you know, a lot more programming to this in terms of customization than you'd expect. And there should be because it is a $1,700 bridge camera. At the top, we have our shutter button. Uh, as well as the zoom rocker right there, on and off switch, more programmable, uh, at least to C1 and C2, uh, digital readout for battery life and exposure settings, aperture settings, uh, something that a lot of users wish Sony had integrated into their interchangeable lens cameras that they simply have not. Your shooting mode dial button right here, uh, hot shoe, microphones right here for stere stereo audio. Of course, you don't have to defer to it, but in the past, uh, the audio has been solid. You have your flash, which you can bounce around a little bit that I just deployed. And in terms of other things that are noteworthy, there is your SD card slot right there. NFC contact point. I mentioned 4K video, no pixel binning here. You're gonna get, uh, I believe, Super 35 uh, uh, you know, performance from this camera. Your W series battery port right there mounting point right there uh, and then something that's been on the rx10 line for quite some time the ability to turn the click on or off um, right here in controlling aperture so that if you want it smooth for video you can have it smooth if you want to be able to shoot by feel then as you can see it becomes more rigid once you put the click on and that of course is dedicated to still shooting as opposed to video shooting where you'd want it to be silent now this camera is silent for, for those of you wondering uh, the 20 megapixel sensor on here uh, can shoot completely silently. And that's another really nice thing about this camera. I see a little bit dust, a little bit of dust right there out of the box. And I'm looking for my, my blower because I want to hit that right now before I get out there and try to shoot samples with this. But the reality of this camera is that you're looking at, you know, one of the, really should be doing it this way for anyone unaware. You want gravity to work with you, not against you. You're looking at a very expensive camera, no doubt about it. Again, 1700 US dollars. You could be investing this into a system and then buying lenses. The idea though that Sony is presenting is that you don't need to go through that hassle. You've got it all right here. Uh, and it is an appealing thing if the execution is correct. Of course, this shoots raw. I've read about actually um, seeing Adobe uh, supporting in Lightroom raw files from this camera. So that's another exciting thing. Uh, something that I don't believe was available with previous generations um, in terms of workflow uh, being there. So that's another great thing. Sony has always said this is the perfect camera for photojournalists. I understand why, because it gives enough guts in both the still and video department to really be beyond adequate, but actually very good. Uh, because of its optical steady shot as well. It gives you about four and a half stops. So that's another thing to consider. And that autofocus system really is the game changer for this camera. If I haven't put enough emphasis on it, I will re reiterate that right now. The RX-10 was always a marvel, but the contrast only autofocus system was always a letdown, especially for the amount of money. And that's where, to me, this becomes very compelling when you compare it to interchangeable lens cameras. So let's say I was to compare it to the A6500, a very good, if not one of the best, mirrorless uh, APS-C cameras from Sony that has five axis image stabilization, 4K video capture, of course, a larger sensor, and then can be paired with full frame or APS-C Sony E-mount glass or even third-party glass. 
the thing is, is that this has nearly as good an autofocus system as that 425-point phase detection system that's in that award-winning A6500. So the fact that this gets close to the same autofocus prowess but packs a Carl Zeiss 24 to 600 millimeter lens that is no slouch, again, 2.4 to f4, so it's not a slow piece of glass, and granted, that's you have to take into account that you're working with a smaller sensor, so that affects you know, your aperture, uh, pr you know, proportionately, the idea is still the same. You're getting basically the guts of an interchangeable lens camera now in a bridge, which never existed. And I knew this was going to come as soon as we saw it in the RX100 Mark V. Uh, the fact that they had introduced uh, the, you know, hybrid phase detection uh, autofocus system, this is, was beyond logical because this is a telephoto dream to work with. Uh, instead of lugging around a huge lens, you can just take this camera with you and be done. That is, again, if the image quality is up to snuff. And I am expecting good things uh, because overall, what I've seen in terms of test footage, images, everything looks fantastic. And really, the autofocus has always been the difference for me personally on being able to say that the RX10 could retire an interchangeable lens system especially now with what Sony's done with changing the, the, the entire game when it comes to autofocus speed and capability with their highest uh, or their most expensive uh, full-frame offering that I reviewed this past year. So a lot of excitement for me personally with the RX10 Mark IV because it offers so much, even though on paper it may seem to be incredibly expensive for what it is. Uh, the run-and-gun, ease of use, and just what I expect to be a very high number of keepers is what ultimately could render the RX10 Mark IV being one of the best cameras ever made, in my opinion. And as soon as I spend some time with it, I'll be able to confirm or, of course, refute that claim. But that's what I'm thinking, because that was what was always missing from the RX10. Contrast simply wasn't enough. Uh, and here now we're looking at something where we have a new level of... Uh, autofocus that just simply wasn't there previously. So a lot of excitement looking forward again, as I've repeated multiple times, to getting out there and testing this beast out and seeing if it really does warrant the 1700. Of course, if the autofocus system isn't up to snuff, I'm going to let all of you know, and I'm going to steer you towards an interchangeable lens camera where you can achieve the autofocus prowess that you're after. But if this comes close to the A6500, I believe this is going to be a no-brainer when comparing it uh, with something like the A6500 or A6300 or whatever Sony may come up with in the lineup, uh, probably through the beginning of 2018 to supplant uh, the A6500. But any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit that like button. And as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.